Hi guys, I'm here to show you how to get uh, to your assignments on Google Classroom. There's going to be two separate classrooms. Once you get in, you'll see that there's one that's made for the second, third, and fourth grade group, and you'll have one that's made for the fifth and sixth graders, just to keep your assignments separate so that you're not seeing things you don't need to worry about. So when I get online, I go to my browser, and I type classroom.google.com. Dot com. All right, I have to change my account just because it's trying to log me in as that former student that I used last time. This is probably not something you'll need to do unless several kids are using the same Chromebook or the same device. If, for example, uh, this was my brother's account and now I need to get into my account, what I can do up here is click on this little green circle It'll have someone's initial in it. Um, if it's if it were my brother's, it would have a big M in it. Um, but I'm going to click into this. I don't want to be in this account, so I'm going to sign out of that account. And now Google's saying, like, what account do you want to use? So I'm going to use another account. Um, 9,000 accounts are coming up here, and, of course, none of them are the ones that I want. Oh, wait. Um, there I am. You might need to type yours in. This is that same email address that you would have used before. For example, like I said, mine might look like kricky1212 at learncharter.net. If you've forgotten how to do that, go back and watch the video that's also posted to Dojo about how do I get into my school email. That's the email that I'm using. I'm going to tell mine not to auto-populate so that you guys can keep following along. Okay, please stop doing that. Okay, I'm going to type. Hey, Ricky. I can't type. At learncharter.org. Now, that's my address. You will put in, obviously, your address. Next. Password. Yours is that um, word number word password or the LCS -E or LCSE, whichever one you've got, at, and then a number. Again, anyone who has lost that, forgotten that information, please get a hold of me. Email me at the address you can see right here. Or have your parents get a hold of me on Dojo or leave me a note on Dojo. And I can send you that password. All right. So now I've got that put in. I'm in Google Classroom. You guys are seeing I'm attached to a lot of different classes because I teach multiple grades. You will only see the classes that are relevant to you. So, for example, my fourth graders might see my fudge group, which is what I'm calling my second, third, and fourth grade group because you're reading the book um, Tales of a Fourth Grade, Nothing About the Little Boy Named Fudge, and Mr. Aguilar and Miss Condren's group. Okay. My fifth graders might see uh, a reading class, my class, and Miss Cadenhead's class. Now, I'm not attached to Miss Cadenhead's class because I don't teach reading, but you might see a third group on there for Miss Cadenhead. So, for the purposes of what we're doing today, you are looking for my class. So, second, third, and fourth grade, this is you over here. Fifth and sixth grade, this is you over here. Okay. My fudge group, you see the little lizard? That's your group. Fifth grade, sixth grade, the purple group. That's your group, all right? If you don't see one of those groups, let me know and I'll send you the code. If for some reason you have not joined one of these classes yet, you will go up here. This little plus sign says to join a class. You will not have the choice to create a class. I'm a teacher. I get to create classes. Yours will ask you to join a class, all right? You might have an invitation from me. You can just accept that. If you don't see an invitation from me, you'll get a code. I will send you that code in your email. You'll just type that in. That will then put this little group up on your screen. All right. Once you're into the group, go in. This is your stream it's kind of like your feed on facebook or instagram or 
TikTok or whatever it is that you guys look at. This is where you find your announcements. Dr. Folkman and I both post here and you are allowed to respond with comments and questions. So the most recent thing was Dr. Folkman announcing her office hours. Then she reminded people that she's got office hours. If I wanted to comment and say, are we using Zoom or Google Meet? I could ask down here. Everyone can see your comments. So please don't say anything you don't want the whole room to see. But if you've got a simple question like, is this due tomorrow? Or, you know, this form is broken or this link is broken because everyone will then have that same problem. Go ahead and say whatever you want to say publicly. Okay. So this is your stream. This is mostly announcements. Work will show up on your stream like, oh, hey, you've got another assignment. You probably want to go look at that. But it's not the actual work itself. To find the actual work, you're going to go into classwork. Okay, see this little purple thing up here at the top? That's where your actual assignments are. So assignments are broken into four groups. We have phonics and fluency. We have computer programs. That's where you'll find like your IXL. If we assign Alexia, if uh, we assign um, read theory, that'll be listed under your computer programs. Your writing assignment and your read aloud and comprehension work, okay? For any assignment that's listed, you will only see the ones you have to do. For uh, example, if Dr. Folkman were to put something up here that is for her sixth graders, but I don't necessarily want my sixth graders to do it, she's just she knows how to go in and turn off that assignment for my kids. So anything you see listed here is for you. So anything you see, you should be doing. So let's take, for example, Blubber. Okay, I'm going to click on that, and there's the assignment. It says, watch the video here. So I'm going to click there. It's going to take me to YouTube. You're going to watch the video of, of me reading the book. And then it's going to say, complete the exit ticket. When you click on that, it will take you into this short, short little quiz. Okay. When you're done, you'll submit. Um, for those of you who are using any of the uh, speech to text, that's fine. For number five, we have to do the long answer. Please go ahead, open up something like a Google Doc form if you want to, and go ahead and copy and paste um, what, you know, whatever you're speaking into the computer. Okay. I'm going to pop out of that. Oops, now I'm gonna, I've got it. There we go. All right. Once you do the quiz, you'll notice it tells me one person has turned it in. This is how I know your work is done. If I go into this, I can see everyone who's got it assigned. And it's fine that you guys don't have this done right now. Don't, don't panic about this. But I can also see that Bryant did it. He's turned it in. I need to go look at my teacher's side and see what his grade was and put that in the grade book. So this is how you know that I saw your work. You will see over here, it no longer says missing. It says how many out of eight, because there's eight points on the quiz. So once the final question is graded by an adult, a human, then we can put the total grade in and it'll come up over here and we'll let you know what your grade was. Then I can just click back up here to find what is the next thing I need to work on. Those of you who have been having problems getting in, you're a couple assignments behind. You've got time. Get caught up. I am not taking off points for late work. Um, you know, June 19th, they are going to expect to have a report card of some sort. What it looks like right now, I'm hearing, is it's going to basically, for third through sixth grade, it's going to say that you're either meeting the standard, you're passing, you're not meeting the standard, meaning you're doing the work, but you're not doing it very well for whatever reason. Some kids just want to smash the keyboard until they've got an answer and send it. Some kids are struggling with how to do it. They're like, I couldn't understand the story. It, was, it went over my head and I didn't know what they were talking about. Um, but that's something that we have to look at as a teacher and decide if you're ready for the next grade. If I get nothing... Then my third choice is to put, give, put down for you what's called an incomplete. 
I have not gotten a whole lot of feedback yet on what that means for next year. I don't know if that means you will have to say, for example, you're a fifth grader right now. You get an incomplete because you didn't do anything while we were at home. Does that mean you start next year in fifth grade? You got to get caught up before we put you in sixth grade. Does it mean you have to do a summer school type program? I don't have the answers for that. So please make everyone's life really easy and do the work. If you're struggling with it, I can absolutely help you. We can make sure your grades look reasonable so you're ready for the next grade next year. But if it's incomplete because you didn't even try, I don't know what the next step is yet. I promise to share that with you as soon as they tell me. But this is all brand new for everybody and we don't have those rules yet. So if you just do the work, we don't have to worry about all that. So go in, do your work. There are some things you need to email to me. Like when you do this um, fluency piece, you're going to watch this video for directions. And then you're going to make your own either uh, your own little video or your own picture, a couple or a couple of pictures. And then email that to me so that I can go in and mark you as having turned it in. So right now, this is what I need from everybody who hasn't done some of these things. This phonics and fluency activity on the shh sound. I need I excel three skills a week at 90% or higher. Um, I need you to send me a quick little email. I've gotten that from one student so far who I wrote back this morning. Please send me a quick email. So it shows me that you know how to get into your email and you can just type up something really quick to say, hey, Miss Ricky, I did this. And then you've got chapter one of Blubber and chapters two and three. I will always stack the new work on top of the old work. Eventually, what I may end up doing is making a uh, whole new category of like old work. And then if you need it, it's still there, but it's not going to be cluttering up when you're trying to find new things. But for right now, I'm leaving everything where it is so that everyone can get caught up. All right. Now you know where it is. Now you know what it is. Uh, feel free to email me. Feel free to leave me a note on Dojo, whatever your preferred communication is uh, with any questions or pop into office hours tomorrow at 10 o'clock. Have a good day.